from tunnel dwellers to an entire town that decided to move below ground. Join us today as we ask, are these underground communities sustainable? Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 8. Las Vegas Tunnel People The glittering lights of Las Vegas shine in stark contrast to the life that exists below it. Hundreds of people still inhabit the city's flood tunnel network, which stretches for over 200 miles. Many of them suffer from drug addiction, mental or physical illness that ultimately drove them to seek refuge underground. Some lost their homes, while others simply felt life was safer in the tunnels. Most of their furniture and other amenities come from things thrown away by people living above. They have to organize their possessions in such a way that water doesn't get to them as floods occur frequently. Reporter Matthew O'Brien found the tunnel people while researching a murder case. He wrote a book about them entitled Beneath the Neon and has set up a foundation to help them. According to him, these are normal people who've lost their way generally after a traumatic event. Number 7. Bucharest Sewer Orphans The Romanian capital of Bucharest has hundreds of people living in the sewers, particularly around its main train station. After the revolution of 1989 and the fall of communism, a number of Romanian orphanages were closed down. Many of the children eventually found a home in the sewers where the warmth of the steam pumps helped them endure the harsh Romanian winters. They were once led by a man called Florin Cora, who the media dubbed the king of the sewers. Cora was regarded by many as a tough but fair leader who cared in his own way for those abandoned to life in the sewers. He equipped the underground with rudimentary forms of running water and lighting, as well as electronics, beds, kitchens, painted walls and even artwork. Referred to as father by the younger generation, he gave money and food to those who brought him whatever they managed to acquire, from scrap metal to telephones and laptops. Nevertheless, a significant part of Cora's money came from selling drugs. The people crowded in the heat and heavy air of the sewers are plagued by addiction and disease. The dirty water around the sewers is reportedly always flowing with used syringes. The police tried to get rid of the community for years, but Cora managed to avoid them. That was until 2015 when he was arrested for drug trafficking. Cora was given a 14-year sentence that left Bucharest sewer people without their beloved leader. Before we move on, answer this question. What nickname was attributed to the leader of Bucharest sewer-dwelling people? Was it A. Bruce Lee B. Van Damme C. Rambo or D. Rocky Balboa Let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. Number 6. Underground Factories in Moscow It would seem that the Russian capital has a penchant for underground towns. Various Moscow police raids have uncovered a number of these settlements in recent years. In one case, a community of over a hundred people was found living in an abandoned bomb shelter. The inhabitants were migrant workers for the factory above them, which produced needles, blades, and safety pins. In another raid, an entire underground factory was discovered beneath the city's Cherkizovsky market. The police arrested hundreds of illegal workers. They found workrooms with sewing machines, which meant that the purpose of the complex was to produce clothes. However, there were also living quarters, a cinema, a casino, a cafe, and oddly enough, a chicken coop. Number 5. Matmata Up until 1967, it wasn't known that Matmata, a small town in the south of Tunisia, had regular settlements. The general assumption was that the area was only traversed by nomadic tribes. The people of Matmata live in traditional underground troglodyte structures. To create these homes, they would first dig large pits in the ground. The rooms consisted of artificial caves dug around the perimeter of the pits, which were then connected through trenches. In the late 1960s, there was heavy rainfall for more than three weeks 
which caused many of the troglodyte homes to collapse. The people of Matmata then reached out for help and sent a delegation to a nearby town. That's how their underground way of living was discovered. Aid was sent to the community and above-ground settlements were created. However, most of the people opted to continue living in rebuilt troglodyte homes. Around 2,100 people still live in Matmata and they mainly live on tourism and folklore exhibitions in their homes. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 4. Rat Tribe The Rat Tribe is a term that's used in reference to people in Chinese cities who live in underground accommodations. They're typically low-income migrant workers who can't afford to find lodgings anywhere else. Officials claim there are close to 300,000 people living in Beijing's underground, but the numbers widely believed to be much higher. These subterranean rooms typically consist of basements or air raid shelters built during the Cold War. Beijing's massive underground tunnel network was open to the public to accommodate the population surge from various towns and villages looking for a better life in the city. On average, the rooms measure 105 square feet and cost about $70 per month. In recent years, the Chinese government has banned the rental of these rooms out of safety concerns. The living conditions can be quite poor, as reflected by one case where there was a single toilet to be used by the occupants of 80 rooms. Number 3. Islamic Sect Faiz Rahman Satarov is the leader and self-proclaimed prophet of an Islamic catacomb sect based in Kazan, Russia. The Faiz Rachmanist movement, named after its initiator, is regarded as illegitimate by the Russian Muslim clergy, who hold Muhammad as the one true prophet. Satarov reportedly started calling himself a prophet in the 1980s after he interpreted sparks from a trolleybus cable as God's divine light. In 2012, while raiding Satarov's home, the Russian authorities found an eight-level complex of chambers beneath the house. Its inhabitants consisted of the sex followers, 38 adults and 27 children. They were forbidden to leave the underground complex and most of the children had reportedly never seen the sunlight. Because of their poorly ventilated and unsanitary living conditions, they had symptoms of tuberculosis and anemia. Three members of the sect, including 83-year-old Satarov, were arrested. They claimed that the building and its underground represented an independent state, free from Russia and worldwide Islamic organizations. The Russian authorities, however, found that the building had been built illegally and ordered it to be demolished. Satarov's followers, who call themselves believers, claimed they would throw themselves in front of the bulldozers. Number 2. Syrian Bomb Shelters The civil war that has taken grip of Syria in recent years has forced many of the country's inhabitants to adapt to increasingly rougher living conditions. Constant battles between the government and various rebel factions have devastated the country. It has been described as the second deadliest war of the 21st century. To escape the airstrikes and bombardments, a number of Syrians have moved their lives underground. In one part of the country, an amusement park was set up for children by connecting a series of basements. That way, they could play without having to fear the bombs. Hospitals have been set up underground, far from fresh air or sunlight. In several villages, large areas were dug by the locals where more people could live together. These shelters have been compared to graves by some of the residents. They're overcrowded, poorly ventilated and have mold growing on the walls. There's also no water, electricity or proper sanitation. So, what's the nickname of Bucharest's Sewer King? If you guessed A, Bruce Lee, then you're right. Cora reportedly got it from his prowess as a street fighter when part of a gang of thieves. He always wore rows of metal chains around his wrists and ankles, claiming that he could move like lightning upon taking them off. Number 1. Cooper Petty More than a century ago, a teenager found opal gemstones in a desert-like region of southern Australia. 
the size of his discovery would eventually turn into Cuba Petty, the opal capital of the world. By 1999, there were over 250,000 mineshaft entrances in the area. Each prospector was allowed a 165-foot claim and a law was instituted that discouraged large-scale mining. This allowed the small town of Cuba Petty to take shape and many residents were forced to adapt to the hellish living conditions of the area. In the summer, scorching temperatures can surpass 110 Fahrenheit. There's no cloud coverage or rainfall and the humidity is very low. The people of Cuba Petty, most of who work in the opal industry, thus opted to move their residences underground. The below ground homes are bored into the hillside rock and feature all the comforts of life above without the need for air conditioning. These homes or dugouts have surface facades that lead into a cave system that may consist of three bedrooms as well as a lounge, kitchen and bathroom. There are also churches, shops, bars and even an entire motel where visitors can get a taste of life underground. Even though it only consists of about 2,500 people, Cuba Petty is responsible for roughly 70% of the world's gem quality opal. Unsurprisingly, it was here that the world's largest opal was discovered. Nicknamed Olympic Australis, the stone weighed 7.6 pounds and was valued at $1.8 million. Thanks for watching. Would you rather live in an opal mine? But without taking any precious stones with you or live in a home outside in the blazing heat but you get to keep any stones you find let us know in the comments section below